Hello everyone and welcome back to the lab. In this video we're going to be making ethyl salicylate, which smells like wintergreen. Methyl salicylate is the chemical that makes wintergreen taste like it does. Ethyl salicylate is very similar and it smells basically the same. In this video I'm going to use 21.6 grams of salicylic acid, 120 milliliters of ethyl alcohol, 20 milliliters of sulfuric acid, and 10 grams of magnesium sulfate. In one of my previous videos, I hydrolyzed an ester to get a carboxylic acid. In this video, I'm going to use a carboxylic acid to make an ester. This is called an esterification. Salicylic acid will react with ethanol using an acid catalyst, sulfuric acid, to make an ester ethyl salicylate. In my salicylic acid video, I used water to hydrolyze an ester, and the reverse reaction of this can take place. Ethyl salicylate can hydrolyze to give its alcohol and carboxylic acid. That's what this means right here, we have to remove water in order to drive the reaction to completion. Sulfuric acid does this in part. Sulfuric acid has a strong affinity for water, so it can hold on to the water and prevent it from reacting. I'm going to try a different way to remove most of the water. Over the reaction flask, I'll, I'm going to set up a, a soxalate extractor and a condenser. The soxalate extractor will fill up with ethanol and water. It condenses in the condenser and will fill up the chamber here. In the chamber, I'll have some anhydrous magnesium sulfate which will remove the water by becoming hydrated. When the level of ethanol rises high enough, it will be siphoned out and go back in the flask. This way, the water will be removed. In this reaction, only about 9 milliliters of the ethanol will be consumed. The rest of it is to fill up the soxalate extractor so that it can be continuously dried and to be used as a solvent. In this flask, I've placed 21.6 grams of salicylic acid and 120 milliliters of ethanol. You can see that it's very cloudy. This is from the presence of magnesium sulfate in the ethanol because I did not distill it after drying. But this won't be a problem because there's going to be magnesium sulfate in the extractor anyway, and I'm going to distill the ethyl salicylate to purify it. I've actually done this reaction before, and this was the yield. It was about 50%, which is pretty poor. By using a new method, I hope to get a better yield. I just added the sulfuric acid. I've just added the soxalate extractor and condenser. I also put the magnesium sulfate in a filter paper and put it into the extractor chamber. Now we're going to heat up the flask until it's at reflux and leave it like that for three hours. As the ethanol in the flask boils, it travels up, goes through this side arm, and reaches the condenser. In the condenser, it will condense back into a liquid and drip into the extraction chamber. As the level of fluid in the chamber rises, so will the level of fluid in this tube. When the level gets to the top of the tube, it will go over and siphon out all of the fluid in there and bring it back into the flask. Okay, whatever you do, don't try to do it the way I showed. It turns out, I didn't think about that as more of the solvent boiled out and went into the chamber, that whatever was in here would have more and more ethyl salicylate and less and less ethanol. Now, mixtures of liquids boil at somewhere in between the boiling points of the components. Now, ethanol boils at about a little under 80 degrees, but ethyl salicylate, it'll boil at about 230. So, at the when there was the lowest amount, it was probably somewhere around 50% ethyl, ethyl salicylate. Now, that meant that whatever was in here was much hotter than the boiling point of ethanol and it was just ethanol that was in here because the ethyl salicylate couldn't make it out or at least not much of it 
So, when the siphon activated and it started putting the solvent back in, it started rapidly boiling and completely overwhelmed the condenser and was spewing out of the top. The small amount of ethyl salicylate that was making it over, it's very, very, it's a very strong odor and not much of it is needed to have an effect. So the amount was enough that it was choking and I could not stand it, I had to leave. So I let everything cool down, put on a different condenser, and now we're just gonna do it like normal. It's been quite a long time and now I've set up for simple distillation to remove the ethanol. I distilled off as much ethanol as I could before the vapor front of the ethyl salicylate started moving up the flask. And here's the flask. It's cooling right now. And it looks like the top layer is the ethyl salicylate. After letting the contents of the flask cool, I transferred everything into the separatory funnel. We'll now wait for the layers to separate. I've just separated them. Here's the bottom layer. And here's the top layer. I've washed it once with water. I washed the crude product several times with distilled water, twice with sodium bicarbonate solution, and several more times with distilled water. I just added a scoop of anhydrous calcium chloride to absorb the last of the water, and now I'll set up for distillation. I put a salt bath, and then our impure product. I'm doing short path distillation because um, it boils at such a high temperature that the short condenser can condense all of it and there's less losses because there's less room for get stuff to get stuck in. My highest temperature thermometer is actually this one. It goes up to 200 degrees Celsius. So to measure the temperature, I actually have a thermocouple in there. When this gets to about 180, I'll remove it. It's boiling pretty good now. Temperature's slowly rising. I don't think anything's condensed on the thermometer yet, but when the still head reaches about 230 Celsius, I'll start collecting. After quite a time of heating and a bunch of aluminum foil insulation, the temperature has jumped up quite a bit, and we're collecting a bunch of oil. It looks pretty good so far. The rate of distillation basically just stopped, and I removed the flask from heat. There's just a small amount of a brown, viscous, boiling liquid. It's good we don't have that in our product. There's that. There's that. The first stuff that came over was slightly cloudy because of a small amount of water. There was like a fog on the joint. And... Fortunately, it's in there, but it's probably not significant. I'll probably just dry it again. Here's the product of about five hours of work. 15.82 grams of ethyl salicylate. This corresponds to a 61% yield. 61% is kind of disappointing, but it is a lot better than the less than 50% yield that I got last time. It's slightly cloudy, but that's not much of a problem. As always, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.